Kim Jefferson, tell me a little bit about yourself and you know what you're doing, um, that sort of thing. And we'll get into some more background questions, but in general, what do you do, Kim? I am a health and fitness coach, and I focus primarily on women over 40, helping them to feel fit, comfortable, and confident in their bodies as they are so they can stop this whole restriction and break up with that diet mentality. I like that. I like that. I'm over 40, and I have that mentality. So, <laughs> Get in well, line. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So tell me, what, what, uh, what do you love to do in your coaching uh, business? I love those aha moments, especially when they're like those really simple things. And that just like lights me up when some, when I give someone like a little simple thing and they're like, holy crap, I didn't think of that. You know, cause we always think health and fitness has to be this whole complicated thing. And when I give them something simple and they're like, I can do that. I'm like, oh, we're getting somewhere. I have just recently come off drinking coffee every morning and I've started drinking tea. And um, is there anything you could tell me that I could do? Cause I've been trying to get away from that much caffeine in the morning. Cause I really do wake up groggy and like, I can't move if I don't have my coffee. So I'm finally over the headaches and all of that. So what do you think I should add in now? Because I'm just, I've got tea in the morning. So for energy, uh, energy, just cleansing, whatever, just a better way to start the morning than what I was doing before. So I, um, for a lot of people, I always, I start my day with exercise. It, 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 okay. For me, it, it helps balance me, but it also, I know me, if I let it go past eight, nine o'clock, I can come up with a million excuses for why I shouldn't work out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I use, and, and I, when I say I work out, like I can go for a walk and I feel like a new person. Like I feel like I've gotten my thoughts cleared up in my head and like I'm yeah. ready to like attack the day. The other thing I tell people is like, have like a nice big glass of ice water. So, mm -hmm. cause most of us are dehydrated. So have that cup of tea and then like the reward is the glass of, is the glass of water. Yeah, I agree. The, the water definitely helps. I've been drinking a lot more water recently and, um, and I can see a difference in how I actually feel overall. Yeah, because most of us that are, are dehydrated and that dehydration leads us to eat more food because we think we're hungry versus dehydrated. Mm -hmm. The other thing I, I tell my uh, clients to do is have a bedtime like you're a nine-year-old like, and commit to it. You know, I'm in bed 10 o'clock. I'm an old lady. I'm like 10 o'clock. <laughs> I'm in bed. I stayed up to like 12. I went, I went to a Red Sox game a few weeks ago. I stayed up to like midnight. I was a hot mess all week. Oh, it, okay. I, I, I understand. If you stay up way too late, it, it definitely messes with your sleep patterns. And then you're going to wake up at the same time every morning, no matter what. Right. So, you know, when seven o'clock came, I was like, oh God. But you know, when I have my normal bedtime, seven o'clock comes, I'm like, all right, let's do this. So what do you do in your free time? Do you, are you able to incorporate your business into your life in your free time? Or do you totally unplug and do something else? Um, you know, I totally wish I was that unplugger person, but I'm not. So in my free, on my days off, um, I give myself like a couple hours that I do a few things and then I can like walk away and enjoy whatever I'm doing. So if I'm on vacation, you know, I wake up in the morning, I could do a couple hours and then I'm like, all right, let's go out, do our schedule activity today or lay on the beach or read a book or what have you. But I always feel like a couple hours and then I can move on with my day. Very cool. Um, so talking about in your business, you know, you've got to have some inspiration out there to keep you going. Who are your inspirations in this fitness space? And even in the online business space, who, who do you look to for, um, for your inspiration? Um, it's funny. I, I, I try not to look at fitness people because I find that it made me very competitive. Mm -hmm. And so now what I, I, I do is I, if I'm, I need some inspiration, I need some motivation to like keep going, I will go to like a YouTube video and like, you know, those like compilation um, goal type videos, 
That's yeah. what kind of, that's what gets me fired up. And usually when I hear something like that, something out of there, I'm like, oh, huh, I could build off of that. So mm-hmm. that's what kind of gets me going. Cause I felt like, and I'm sure many people listening to this, like we get caught up in the comparisons. Like I might look at you, like if I'm a, um, you know, uh, ads person, I might look, look at you, Sally, and be like, Sally has 4 million followers. Like, what the hell? How come I'm not doing what Sally's doing? Not quite 4 million. <laughs> right. but you know what I mean? Like, if I, look at, if I look at you and I'm like, God, like, what's Sally doing? I can't believe it. And then, like, I feel like sometimes I would not purposely steal, but, like, try to be you. And I'm, that's not me. And, like, I, that was a pitfall I fell into when I first started. I would look at, you know, mm-hmm. several people and I'm like, but I'm not Sally. I can't be Sally. So I had to like break free of looking at people in the fitness industry and just kind of look elsewhere in order for me to find the inspiration. So I didn't feel like I was mimicking or copying or trying to be someone that, that I right. wasn't. You were just looking for some sort of direction and inspiration to move towards uh, your own goals in your own way. And the thing is, you can use the same types of methods, but you're going to put your own spin on it. And right. that all of us are, and nobody has created a, a completely unique idea at this point in our lives. There's way no. too many things out there that are just, just going to naturally uh, draw you in and you're going to follow their lead on that. But then you would end up turning around and making it your own anyway, which Absolutely. is to- totally fair. That's not plagiarizing. That's not copying or stealing. That is literally being inspired and then turning it into something for your own business and your own followers. Right. Absolutely. You know, like I look at it as like, you know, the mousetrap started, but now like someone put like a different spin on the mousetrap. Like, so everyone can build a better mousetrap. So I just mm-hmm. felt like if I looked at outside of fitness and I found inspiration there, it made me feel more attuned to me versus, oh, Sally's got a new program. I should have a new program. Like I, and I felt like I was trying to keep up with the Joneses versus just being Kim. Yes, exactly. I, and I've, did, I've done it too. I've been through all of that. I have studied every program you can imagine out there. And I have been like, eh, I don't really like that part of it. Or I do like this part of it. Or, hey, I could use this. Or, hey, right. maybe I could change this and then cha- you know, just make it a little bit different. Um, speaking of mousetrap, that reminds me of the game that we used to play as kids that you would build this crazy little, um, what do they call it? Like a Rube, Rube, what what do you call that? Rube Goldberg, Rube Goldberg machinery type thing. It's like kids do in science and it's like all these levers and things will make things, you know, go like the ball will go through here and then this thing will drop and then it finally goes until you connect it all together to catch the mouse in the end. Uh, speaking of that, that's kind of like a tool to be able to get people to move forward in your business. What kind right. of tools do you like to use uh, to inspire your followers to move forward into your business? For me, I'm about real talk. You know, I see so much and, you know, you and people listen to this, you see so much you know, hype of like 10 days to tighter abs, 10 days to a tighter ass. And for me, I'm like, yeah, that's possible. But what happens on day 20? That's possible. But like, what's your life? And so I like to come at it as like, what is a day in the life of Sally? Let's make a plan that works for Sally because Mm -hmm. I, I want you to be in this for the long haul. I don't want you three months from now being like, where's the next plan? Because I see so many people doing that where I'm like, I want to work with you right now and say, how do we make this your life? Mm -hmm. And it's not about hard. It's not about deprivation. It's like, how do we make this your life? I'm not that coach. We'll never take away your coffee. I will never take away your wine. I will never take away your date nights. That will never happen. It's me helping you figure out how do you blend that in? How Mm -hmm. do you blend that into your goals? How do you blend that into your life? And create true balance. Right. And, you know, people say, oh, there's no balance. I'm like, I call BS. There is balance. Like, I think of it as like, you know, a seesaw. Like, sometimes you get get on a seesaw and you're a little higher. Sometimes you get on a seesaw and you're a little lighter. And it's just figuring out where that, like, tipping point is for you. And that's where most people don't want to do it. That's where, you know, as they say, ish gets hard. 
<laughs> it gets hard. It does get hard. <laughs> Do you have any online tools that you like to use with people, like My Fitness Pal or some of you know that's a really popular one? Uh, you know, honestly, this when people ask me about tracking, I'm I'm about what's going to work for you. I like My Fitness Pal. It works for me. It's easy for me to sit down at at the end of the day and type in all of my food. I like that. But some people, the numbers throw them off. So for me, the biggest thing tool is tracking. Like if you, if you write down every single thing you put in your mouth, you write down when you get up, when you sleep, you start to see a pattern emerge. And that's what I'm really looking for. And that's what I want you to look for is like, what are those patterns? You know, your boss tells you, you got to stay late. Do you reach for Snickers? You know, your kids are, are, you know, you got your kids on bed on time. Do you reach for a glass of wine as a reward? You know, what are some of your. Let me tell you a little secret. This is something that a friend of mine used to do. And then I was like, Ooh, I can do that. She took a picture of every meal she ate. Yes. And because she didn't have time to document it in the moment. And yes. also think about this. And this is something that is, it's not brand new face like Facebook stories or Instagram stories. Yes. It's a brand new concept. But I noticed the other day, if you do Facebook stories, you can upload like a picture of what you're eating or your water or whatever your exercise was that day, you can upload it into your Facebook story and share it only with a certain person Yes. or yourself. Do you use that? Um, no, I, I haven't, but I, I have a client. She is the same way. She's like, I can't remember and I can't write down. So she takes a picture and there's an app that I can't, I think it's called I ate that. I think that's the name of the app and it's literally an app. And so she, takes a picture of the app. And then at the end of the day, she's like, I can go through, look at what was on my plate and be like, it was this, 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 and this. So mm -hmm. I can look, I can look at it, but it also, she's like, it makes me in the moment make better choices. Mm -hmm. Because she's about to post it. it is, yeah. Right. She's like, I, she goes, I know I need to take a picture of it and I know I need to tell someone about it. So then it's like, is this picture but worthy? If she used Facebook stories and only shared it with you, for example, you could then go back through, if she paid you for that service, you could go through it and, and try to identify patterns for her to help her break certain things uh, that may be detrimental to her uh, health. Yeah. And that's what I do through uh, each week at U7 Year Food Log. And through that week, I like look oh, at so you do that. Yay. Yeah. Okay. So, I, so each week, each week, my clients send me a food log and through it's easier for me to see a pattern in a week than a day because yeah. yeah, like, yeah. we all have a bad day, right? Yeah. So it's like, no one gets penalized for a bad day. We all have them, but it's like, is it a, pe a bad week? Um, so as far as you doing this fitness, wellness type coaching with people, um, why are you doing it? What inspired you to actually start doing this and how, how long have you been doing it? What's your experience? That sort of thing. What happened? So, I've been doing this, you know, it's so funny because like whenever people ask me this question, I'm like, huh, how long have I been doing this? I've been doing this for roughly 15 years. Wow. Um, it started out, um, my husband and I got married and he was turning 40 and he does, his family doesn't have a very good health history. So I said, hey, why don't we give each other a personal trainer for Christmas? Thinking like, let's just do, like, you know, let's give each other the gift of health. Mm -hmm. And so we met with, met with the trainer. I thought I was good. We met with the trainer. He's like, well, when you lose about 30 pounds, I was like, Who? Me? and so we went every Saturday at 7am and I lost 30 pounds and I literally followed everything he said. And I was like, fascinated. Like he was just like, so knowledgeable. Like I came every Saturday morning at 7am with like, okay, Mike, here are my questions. And he answered every single one of my questions. And he was like, okay, you need to do this. For, you need to do this for a living. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, you ask the best questions. He's like, you don't ask me like, what food's this? But you, he's like, you ask me like, what goes on behind the scenes? You should mm -hmm. do this. Yeah. And I was like, I got a full time job. I'm full. I'm and full. then <laughs> eventually, I kind of said like, I, you know, I got really got into the, the gym, really got into fitness, and I said, I'm happy here. Like, I am happiest when I'm at the gym, and I was able to translate the weight loss that I had at the gym into my work. Like I finally was able to see like what happens when you set a goal and you hit it. I was like, Oh, that's what happens. Like, then you want to do another thing. Then you want to do another thing. And that's what helped me translate to my business or that's what made me think like, 
huh, I could possibly open a business if I just set small goals. Mm -hmm. Now, do you mostly work online with people or do you have some offline like in-person clients? Um, originally when I started, I was like 50, 50, and then I was sick of getting up in the morning. So I slowly transitioned. And so I'd say 80% of my work is online. I still teach a handful of fitness classes, huh. but eight, for the bulk of my work is online. Now, what tools do you use for the fitness part since you're not, you know, they're working out with them? What do you advise them to do? So I would say 80% of my clientele, they know, they, they, they're very like gym savvy. Like they've been to okay. the gym before. Okay. If they're not, the workouts that I do give them, I do have like a library of um, exercises that I've physically taped myself. So if you don't know what a bicep curl is, there's a link that says, this is what a bicep curl is. So most of my people just um, wanted you know, this is what I saw when I was at the gym, my clients would travel. They were, they were executive women were, mm -hmm. were the bulk of my clientele. And they would go to, they were like, Hey, I'm going to Atlanta next week. Um, what do I do? And I'd be like, and I would just literally hand them a printout and they'd be like, okay, this is what I'm going to do while I'm in Atlanta for the next three days. Mm -hmm. And so that's what kind of planted the seeds. Like they don't need me there counting reps. They just want someone to say, do this. Yeah. Um, Here's the list. Just go through this wad, this workout of the day or whatever. Exactly. And so that's what I did. So I was like, do this. And so, um, that's primarily what the women who come to me, they're like, do this. And I just, some people don't know what things are. So I was like, I'll just create a database of workouts and that way I could just mix and match everything. And they just can always go to the glossary to find out the workout. Cool. Very cool. That's neat. So where did you grow up, Kim? And where do you live now? I grew up um, on Long Island um, in New York, in New York, and then uh, I came to Boston to college. And like probably seventy percent of the people who come to college in Boston, you stay. I thought oh it was going to be my daughter is in college in Boston. She's going to stay. You sure? She's in the music industry, though. There's a lot oh, here. She's got to leave. She, like, yeah, there's nothing that I have. Oh. A, I the, one of the classes I teach is right next door to Berkeley. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of the students come and take my class and, you know, most of the people who are like, you know, musicians outside of like the symphony, they, they got to leave Boston because we don't really have anything here. Right. Right. Yeah. She's a, in an internship at, in Nashville now that she did this summer. I think she actually finished it already, but she doesn't go back till September. Uh, we'll be flying up there later this month. So, um, to get her all settled back into the dorm again. But you would think, given, you know, Berkeley has been here for millions of years, that we would have more music. Yeah, you would think so. And Nashville, I have to tell you, Nashville is really starting to lose a lot of its sound. Nashville has grown so fast. Downtown is a crazy town. And the experience of being down here can be very overwhelming. A yeah. lot of people who moved down here are actually moving out again. And they had really put a lot of investment and a lot of time an effort into their homes down here, which we live downtown. And uh, my entire floor, except for us, is le leaving or oh. has left. Yeah, one, the last one is on the market right now. And so I'm just like, okay, I don't want my, all my neighbors to leave. Uh, but I think with what I'm doing with this podcast and with this channel, it's called Shout Your Cause. And my goal with that is to try to find more creativity and music and so on and so yeah. forth to bring into our lives and into our businesses to help us tell our stories because that is what is going to make real connections for people and it's going to help people to get in touch with the right nonprofits, the right causes, the right, right. coaches on the ground doing the good work, uh, that sort of thing because you know, you can get up on stage and you can try to sell something and package it and, or be on TV and package it and hand it over to people. But without the accountability and the encouragement and the inspiration from people right around them, it's really, really, really hard for people to make change in their lives. Absolutely. I feel, and I feel like that's been the, is, that's the missing piece. Like, you know, everyone flooded online, like online, mm -hmm. but we lost that, like, in-person connection where like you felt like that sense of community and there's some places that there's community online but I feel like there's still that disconnect yeah yeah exactly 
So earlier, before we even started recording, I had asked you, uh, you know, who are your enemies in this space? And you said you didn't have any, which I liked. Uh, explore that a little bit more and, and then tell me like who your heroes are instead. So it's funny when you ask me that. So, you know, I, I first kind of started dabbling online. I would probably say like 2008, 2009. And I remember, you know, I was still, you know, that like floor trainer and, you know, working 4 million hours a week. And there was a woman who, um, we, I was, you know, working my floor training, but I was also had like another part-time job to like, you know, I'm not 20 anymore. I need to pay my bills. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to do full-time training. I'm going to do this, blah, blah, make the transition. And she was like, yeah, I want to do that too. So I was like, yeah, all you got to do is take the test. You know, it takes about you know, a month to study for it. And so then I moved out of that job. I went to training full time and probably like, I don't know, five years ago, I saw she posted something on Facebook. I was like, Hey, I haven't heard from her in a really long time. So I shoot her a text and she never texts me back. And I'm like, huh, that's interesting. I'm like, whatever. And so my husband goes, uh, her daughter works at a local bar and my husband sees the daughter. She's like, Hey, you know, how you doing? How's your mom? Blah, 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 blah. So then after that encounter, she texted me. She's like, you know, sorry, I ghosted you, but you know, you were doing this and I kind of was still doing what I wanted to do. And I didn't really want to be, you know, be around that. And I'm like, I started personal training, not heroin. Like, what did you not want to be around? Do you not want to be around someone who set a goal and went for it? Like, I didn't, I like, I didn't understand that. And so like, we went for this, you know, long walk. She told me this whole story. And I was like, you know what? Our vibe just does not connect anymore. Mm -hmm. And, you mm -hmm. know, you're not someone who's going to cheer for me. Even if, even if you want to do what I want, I need you to cheer for me. Yeah, I'm a, exactly. Because like I cheer for everyone. Like you could be doing anything, and I'm like, way to go, rock on. I'm gonna sit here on the sidelines and see what happens. But like I can't understand why people can't cheer for someone who is just doing good in the world. Exactly, I I, I totally agree with you. But sometimes though, people are not in that space yet, and they might be envious or jealous or something, and they're not sure how to move past those feelings. Um, so. And in a way, she's probably got some sort of pain that she has not been able to solve yet. Right. So you have to give them enough grace and make, you know, let, let them be. They'll come around eventually or right. not. And I'm that, and I'm that person that you could call me in 20 years and be like, hey, Kim, and I will talk to you like we just talked yesterday. So I'm like, if mm -hmm. she comes around, she comes around. If she doesn't, she doesn't. Well, what about your everyday heroes? Who are you hanging out with online since that's a... Oh your stuff now you know who do you like who inspires you who are your sisters in this in this world you know it's it's funny how like my my husband doesn't really get this whole online space like how like you and I, if I like last year I totally forgot you lived in Nashville but I came to Nashville for like three days but if I have remembered you lived in Nashville I would have totally called you and be like let's meet and never would have thought it was weird that I've never met you in real life and so several years ago, no, I'm lying. Like two years ago, I went to a wedding of a woman I met online. And yeah. so we're all, everyone at the table with all friends from online and the mother of the groom was like, I don't get it. Y'all guys all met online and you're all here friends. So, you know, Jay Gemma. Jay, I met, yeah. Yep. I met her online. Um, Courtney Nicole Davis. I met her. She was there. Um, Cassie Howard. She was at the wedding and it was just like refreshing because I know if I met you in person, you're going to be the same person that you are online. Yeah. So it just, like, it just really brought it home that like when you connect with people online and they're true, authentic people, they're going to be the same people. Yeah. When you meet them in person. And right. I've met so many people, like I've met Jade, I've met, um, you know, a lot of other people in her group, a lot of people in my group, a lot of people, my clients, people that have been on my team et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I love meeting them in person. And I know I'll end up meeting you too, because if you're right. in Boston, I'll, you know, I'm, I'll be up there later this month. I may not be able to help meet you this time just because right. we'll be moving in the dorm and it's a short trip, but I might be able to, there's a, there's some sort of conference happening and, um, and I, I might, I might need to extend my trip to stay longer. So we'll have to just see. Yeah, absolutely. But for me, I, I have, 
you know, I have my fitness people that who I'm friendly with, but it, because they're my friends. So it's like, um, you know, I still, I, I'm friendly with this woman. Her name is Jill Coleman, um, Danny J, uh, this woman, Carrie Manti, you know, I follow their stuff only because they're, were, were friends versus, you know, I, I, they're friends I also admire where they are. They're, it's a woman, um, Natalie Newhart. Um, I, she's a new friend and I like adore her story. Um, and then like business wise, I love Jade. You know, I f follow a lot of what um, Amy Porterfield does. Um, I do a lot um, woman, woman by Camilla Gornia. Like, so I just, I find people who keep it normal and keep it real. Right, right. <laughs> you Excellent. know, I, yeah. What about causes? Do you support any particular nonprofits or certain causes that are close to you? Um, one of the, the, the biggest causes that uh, my husband and I both support is Alzheimer's. Um, so uh, actually two weeks ago, we just um, were part of a, it's a fishing tournament, which doesn't seem like something that should be Alzheimer's related, but uh, it's, a giant, it's a giant fishing tournament where, you know, uh, they don't take any money. They basically, whatever the cost is, that's what they take. Anything above and beyond goes to um, Alzheimer's. And so this year we were, we were able to raise over $300,000. Wow. Race, race. Let me type this up because I want to shout that out. When I, whenever I'm putting these episodes together, my goal is to figure out who are the other people that we could tag that maybe we know uh, mm -hmm. together. Um, also, what support, you know, what cause could we support with the episode so that we put a donation button with that. Mm -hmm. And this will be shouted out on our Facebook business page. And then we will, uh, I've, got to, I've got to figure out all the other little bits and pieces, when, <laughs> which is like, oh my goodness, I don't even know. I'm just trying to get the episode together, you know? I know. So, that, so I appreciate so much that you've mentioned the Alzheimer's Foundation. We've been very close with that as well. And we've got a really good friend who used to lead that here in Nashville for uh, maybe even the whole southeast region of the country, mm -hmm. but um, but I know that he was at least over Tennessee. Um, yeah. So w one other thing I wanted to ask, and I know that you probably market your business in all sorts of ways. We all do. Maybe name one, one of your favorite ways to market your business. And then I have one last question and then we'll be done. What I'm, it's funny. Um, I never thought I'd like would, would like, um, social media. I, I remember when I, you know, social media became, you must be on social media. I was like, ah, it felt so Disc like a disconnect because I'm an in person kind of person, mm -hmm. and um, now I find that you know when I connect with people offline or I connect with people one on one, they're like, "Oh my god, I love following you on Facebook." And I never thought it would be something that it would for me. It was a have to, you know. And yeah. I'm sure many people listening to this is like, "Yeah, social media is a have to," but I think I just took it to be like, it's what you know, sent in a non communal way. It's a way that make makes people get to know me. It makes people have like a sense of community around me. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I'm glad that you like that because I mean, it's very powerful and you don't really understand who's all is watching you or what they're seeing until you talk to them. And then they're mm -hmm. like, Oh, it's everywhere. It's like, you right. where have you been? I don't see your likes. I, I'm clicking in there and I'm looking at all these people. Right. Where's my people that I know. <laughs> but right. they're, they're there. They're there. Cause I remember like when I first decided to go online, I went to a conference and the guy's got, he's like, you know, you stick with it for years. You're going to feel like it's your grandma always liking yourself or your mom always yeah. being like, go girl. So like, there's all these lurkers. So just keep going. And I always like, whenever I'm like, I wrote something awesome. And I'm like, two likes. What? And then yeah. someone's like, Oh, I read that. That was beautiful. I'm like, well, where the hell was your like? Yeah. Where? Yeah. Like comment, share. Hello. Like comment, share. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so the last thing I wanted to ask, what's your favorite song? Oh, man. So I'm going to say I'm trapped in the 80s. Trapped in the 80s? <laughs> I'm trapped. This is why, because I still, when I still teach classes, like, I don't have to look for the explicit lyrics because like, there, were, there was no such in the 80s. So one of my favorite songs is... Um, Everyone's got their something by Nikki Costa. 
Everyone's got their something. How do you spell Nikki's name? I want to say she's N-I-K-K-I. Okay. All right, I'll see if I can find something similar or. Yeah, if not, um, I'll, send you the, I'll send you the link. I'll write myself a note. I and wish then, that we could just attach music to our stuff and just. I know, you know damn right. Yeah. But right. Here's the thing, though. We are amassing a group of musicians on the ground in Nashville who can create something that's inspired by Nikki Costa. Ah. Okay. That's the goal with this podcast is to be able to help people find their music, their creative story, yeah. something like that to, to implement into uh, their marketing strategies, if you will, because music really helps move people. Oh, it does. Like it's music. It's so powerful. I, in my Facebook group, I asked everyone, I'm like, if you were to like walk on stage, like what would be your theme song? And it was really interesting to see the like dichotomy of music. So yeah. I'm like, I have no idea what that song is. Let me Google that. To yeah, like, I, I love like that know, song. I also like to know what song do you sing in the shower? Because typically when people are in the shower and they, they're, it's like they're totally free, they're raw, they're in the moment, they're getting clean, they're washing away the worries of the day or the night or whatever it may be and trying, it's like a refreshing clean slate, if you will. So what song would you say you would like to, you like to sing in the shower? Oh, I like that. That's a good, that's, that's going to be my like, you know, talk back Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, do it. Uh, do you have one? You know, it's funny. Um, I don't sing in the shower. I, no. I'm one of those people when I shower, I'm like Mario Andretti. I'm like, I need to be in and out of here as fast as possible. I do not luxuriate. <laughs> well, maybe you ought to take, take a moment next time and see what you I know. I mean, I do, I do listen to the radio. I listen to the radio when I'm in the shower. And that was when I first moved in with my husband, he didn't understand that concept. I was like, how do you not listen to the radio in the bathroom? <laughs> Exactly. I, I sometimes try to watch a, a show. I'll be watching a show on my phone or my iPad yeah. and I'll try to continue to watch it, but it's hard when you're in the shower to, to keep up with an actual show. Yeah. Um, all right. So do you have a website that we can go to or a link that you want to give me that we can put out on this podcast notes? Yeah. I think the easiest thing to do is to, um, go to actually you know the easiest thing to do is just follow me on instagram okay and that's kim jefferson coach kim jefferson coach so just all together all together instagram kim jefferson coach okay cool well i will definitely put that out there if that's the easiest way to get to you yep I thank you so much. This has been fun. I know this was fun. Thank you so much for thinking of me. You're welcome.